I have to jump back and forth on some of my slides versus uh, my content. Um, but I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to get started. Um, okay, so uh, is this working or not? I have to point, is it? Is it on? Wait, is it on? Is it on? Yeah, just press the next button. Okay. All right. Um, so my name is Sean. I'm, I'm, I go by Swix on the internet. I am very bad at using clickers. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay, uh, kind of stay like this because I'm gonna go back and forth. Um, ah, whoa. Where's all the animations? Ah. Okay, that was re that was really weird. Um, there's, there's supposed to be more here, but uh, I, I work as a developer experience engineer uh, at Netlify, um, based out of New York. Um, I also am a moderator of the R slash React.js subreddit, so if you're learning React or you're a React developer, there's uh, over 150,000 of us talking and sharing and hiring each other in React, uh, please join us. Um, and I'm also a major proponent of this philosophy of learning in public. Um, I, I, a little bit about my, my own story, I'm also a career changer, I, I used to work in finance. Uh, in the end of 2017, uh, I went through a boot camp. To, uh, January 2018 was my first dev job. Uh, a lot of people, when they look at my developer portfolio, they don't really realize this and, and, and uh, realize how far I've come in the, in the last two years. Um, I also don't, re don't really believe it myself, but I think that this is some of the strongest advice that I have for career, de uh, for career development, especially for junior devs. So that's why I'm here. Um, and I'm going to talk, to talk to you today about two major sort of essays that I wrote and, and philosophies and just kind of explain them and, and just like be, might be present and available for Q&A. Uh, it's part, uh, mainly learning in public and then uh, the follow-up is learning gears. So the, uh, I, I kind of start this off with this, like, does anyone remember this, this book, The Secret? Uh, it, was kind of, it was kind of popular about 10 years ago as like this like life advice thing. Uh, it, was very, it, was, it was a lot of like voodoo, like, and it, it basically claims that the law of attraction, which, which claims that thoughts can change a uh, person's life directly. Um, I, I kind of contrast learning in public as the opposite of The Secret. Um, instead of thoughts, um, I think that I assert that actions, specifically sharing things in public, can change your life directly. Um, and that's a, if you think about it, that's a lot of what uh, developers do. Uh, we learn in private by default. Um, everything that we learn, we kind of stick in our memory and hope that you know, we kind of retain it. Uh, and then every few years, we like, go for an interview, and then we have to take out things out of memory and sort of prove that we know stuff. Um, whereas uh, learning, uh, learning public uh, doesn't keep stuff in your, in your thoughts. You actually uh, take concrete actions to share them and, and uh, be, be forcibly improved by the, the people around you and, and, and just by your own past self. Um, so, uh, and this is a reference to uh, Scott Hanselman, is one of the very senior sort of C-sharp uh, Microsoft developers. He talks about this as the dark matter developers. A lot of people just kind of like, they exist, you know, they're downloading your packages and like writing, writing software, but you don't really know who they are. And that's, and that's completely fine, but uh, I assert, I'm, I'm here to assert that there is a different way forward for the, for the top 1% if you choose to opt in uh, for that. Um, Brad Frost, this, this designer of, uh, this, he's the creator, uh, he coined Atomic Design and uh, a bunch of other design uh, uh, trends, uh, talks about this as creative exhaust. Like, it's just as a function of you creating things, you just have to put stuff out there. Um, and I think, I, I want you to develop this as a habit of life, of, of, of the way you do things is just you, you just create stuff and you put it out there. Um, so instead of creative exhaust, I actually kind of call it learning exhaust. Like as part of your learning, um, you, you start writing for yourself. Um, and it doesn't have to be public at all. Like if, if I, I, for, for a long time, I actually kept a daily journal just for myself. Um, uh, you can also, ben um, and the stuff that you've written, written can actually benefit future you, especially if it turns up, you, you like type something in Google and in, in, you know, the first Google result is something that you wrote and you forgot. Uh, then you would just be like, thanks, pass me, right? Like that's really cool. Um, and then the, the, the last thing is like, the, the goal is to document what you learn and the problems that you solve and that's it. Not, you're not really like going for anything more ambitious than like, let's just like, what, this, is, this is what I learned. I did not know this yesterday, now I know this today. And forever on, I, I will know this for the future. Like your second brain uh, on the internet can be much larger than your, than your original natural brain. Um, and, and notice that not, in none of this I've said anything about other people. This is not about giving back. This is genuinely the fastest way to, for you to learn. Um, and, uh, but, and, and you also go, the, the, also, the other thing is also that uh, you should try your best to be right, but don't worry when you're wrong because you're not an expert and you're not pretending to be an expert, that's fine. Uh, and we'll talk about what that, what that looks like. Um, what are the different modes of learning in public? Uh, you can write, speak, ask, 
uh, you know, on, on, in communities, uh, uh, contribute code, uh, avoid closed gardens like Slack and Discord, uh, or in-memory storage, as, I, as they say, um, <laughs> and, other, and, other, and other, other interesting forms. I, I do want to uh, particularly highlight speaking and especially uh, celebrate Michael, who's, who's really been such a huge part of the, the Singapore tech media. I'm going to give him a round of applause. Um, without him, there is no venue to speak in Singapore. Um, and so like, it, it really is a, a strong mo moving factor for, for, for um, putting Singapore on the map. Like, I, I, you know, as a Singaporean work in New York, like, I, I really care. I think for, for Singapore to keep growing, like, we have to uh, reach beyond our own shores. Um, and the way we do that is we, we take advantage of the, the skills that we have. The two things Singaporeans are really good at, we're, we're, you know, we're natural English speakers and we're the hardest working people on earth. Like, we, can, we can do a lot with that. Um, okay, so uh, we'll talk a bit about the alternative form factors. Like, you don't have to be blogging all the time. You don't have to be conference speaking all the time. Um, this is one of my favorite speakers, Anjana Vakil. Um, she actually wrote a musical uh, teaching people about tail call optimization. Very, very nuanced uh, sort of compilatory topic in JavaScript. Um, but she made it into a super entertaining talk. Um, highly recommend. Like, th and and this, this really, like, you really master something where you can teach it, teach it well and simply, simply and entertainingly. Um, I don't have anywhere that sort of that talent, uh, so I just write song parodies. This is my Moana and Hamilton parodies in JavaScript. Um, and eventually, some of them will get picked up. Uh, for example, for this talk I, I did at JSConf Hawaii. Um, so then I just, you know, I'm just trying to motivate you with some examples. Um, you, if you can draw, is also a superpower. Um, I also don't have drawing skills, but you also don't need to draw super well. This is Julia Evans, a very senior engineer at Stripe. Um, she just t talks about like Linux internals and, and other you know, engineering topics, and it's not that you know, advanced, but it simplifies complex topics and makes, helps people learn, but she, she also definitely learns every single one of the thing, these things that she does. Um, Lynn Clark is also another uh, expert. Uh, she does, you know, now she works on WebAssembly at Mozilla, um, but she also does code cartoons. So uh, if you just, uh, this is just a shout out for people who can draw. I cannot draw, so it just doesn't apply to me. <laughs> um, you don't have to be, those, those people are very senior. Um, you don't have to be senior to do that, right? Uh, this is Samantha Ming. She, she's just starting out learning JavaScript and she's just making these like colorful notes and putting them online. A lot of people are, are following her just for that. Um, and it's, and, and you know, you build these resources mainly to like document these things, but uh, you're definitely helping other people as well. Um, there, so a lot of people when they, they're like, okay, like I'm, I'm going to put myself out there, but like, oh, what if nobody reads it? Uh, Boohoo, right? Who cares? Um, this is a good thing. It's actually a feature, not a bug, uh, because pro it'll probably suck the first few times you, <laughs> you like, write some stuff. Um, it's also probably false. There will be some small amount of people. Like, this is your time to actually be bad, because when you, when you get a, a wider distribution and audience, um, then you, your, uh, the bar for putting anything out will actually be higher. So um, this is your time to, to, start, uh, to start putting it out there. Um, uh, so, and, and they will read it. Who is, who is this they in this, in this group? Uh, it's the people who are specialists in the thing that you're working on. Um, if, you're, if you're, for example, uh, like the people who, like, let's say you put out, you put out this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, blog post on GovTech, that people who work at GovTech will read it. Like, you know, because that's the thing that they, they work on day, day in and day out. And if you get it wrong, it's actually kind of not your fault. It, they, they actually kind of take upon themselves like, okay, we failed somewhere in our communication, right? Um, and there, there are just not that many people who, who do this, who do this learning in public and give feedback, right? A lot of, a lot of content creation is, is putting stuff out into the void and you get crickets. No, nobody gives feedback. So people who do give feedback actually get a disproportionate voice. Uh, personal example time, uh, this is... Uh, I'm, I'm, so I, I, I'm mostly focused on React. Um, uh, in March of last year, uh, Danny Romov, one of the core uh, members of the React team, uh, released one of the new APIs uh, at JSConf uh, talking about React Suspense. Um, so I stayed up all night that night, took his demo, um, and then uh, you know, wrote it up and, and did, a, did a big walkthrough of, of the whole demo. Um, uh, so like, I just, I just like, went through all the source code, and, um, and just like, explained it to myself and explained it to everyone else who, who read it. Uh, and guess what? Of course, like, he doesn't know who I am. He doesn't, doesn't really care. But, but because I was one of like, maybe four people who wrote it up, um, he went through and, and gave you know, line by line code review on my, on my stuff. You cannot pay for this kind of thing. Okay? Um, so, uh, and then, so there's the experts. And then there's also the, the, the detractors, the haters. 
uh, I call them the peanut gallery, right? Uh, this is a very famous XCCD uh, comic telling you, like, you know, if you're wrong on the internet, someone will come and correct you. Uh, you, can view the, you can choose to view this as a problem or actually the internet working to help you, right? Like, if your ego is small, you're not, your ego is not attached to, the, to, to your current work, um, and you're willing to be taught, you can turn even the most, hater, the, the, the most sort of vis, vicious hater into your, your mentor and your teacher. Um, and I've had that happen to me. Um, so instead of, uh, and it's called the Cunningham's Law, right? Like when, uh, and, and the reason I know it's called Cunningham's Law is because I was on a podcast and I called it uh, uh, Godwin's Law and someone came and corrected me on the name of the law. So thanks, <laughs> proving the law. Um, so instead of, instead of viewing it as the peanut gallery, I also view it as free mentorship. Um, instead of like asking for like, hey, we, if I buy you a coffee, will you give me hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, free mentorship hours? Um, uh, that's just a really poor trade, right? Like just engage in stuff that people are inter interested in and, and uh, engage on a, on a genuine level like that. Um, okay, so uh, the other, the, the quota to that, right, is like try, to, try your best to be right and don't worry when you're wrong. And uh, you're gonna be wrong a lot, so be fine. Um, the, the, the goal is to keep shipping. Uh, being wrong is fine and, and it's gonna be fine if you keep it ego small, so I'm, I'm repeating myself about that. Um, here's, there's some cursing, but <laughs> uh, I, really, I really do believe in this. Like, uh, for example, if you think about management, like when, you, when you're running a management, uh, your goal is to not, pre not prevent mistakes, but to, to, build, to work on the system such that you can recover from any mistake. So you're resilient in that, in that sense. The same way in, in your own learning and in your own career progress, it's not about preventing any, any screw-ups. It's being able to come back from any screw-up. So um, uh, learning in public helps you, helps you do that and helps you ship more. Um, so why does it work? Uh, these are all the reasons which, are, uh, which, which uh, if, I, if I've sort of co covered and I, I, don't have, uh, you know, I don't have time to cover everything, um, but I think mostly, I mostly chalk it on the human psychology. This is just how we work. Especially when you're, in, when you're working in public, um, there's a commitment mechanism and a positive reinforcement. Like some people, people will start uh, cheering you on, right? holding you accountable. Um, and also when, when people are looking for experts and, and uh, consultants and like, people to hire, um, They'll, they'll think of you first because there's a, there's a trick in human mentality. It's, it's called avail availability bias. We tend to associate the, the people that we first recall as like the best because uh, the other people just don't exist in your, in your mind. Uh, it's, it's, it's really tricky. It's kind, of, it's kind of related to inbound marketing as well. So uh, a lot of times when you do job hunts, you're sort of outbound marketing. You're sending your resume out, nobody who knows who you are. Whereas in, in sort of the learning public style, um, you're, you're sort of planting your flag. You're, you're putting out your bad signal and saying like, this is my domain. And people come, and people come to you. Um, the last four, five to six of my uh, past few like job offers and conversations have all started in my Twitter DMs, um, because people just like know what I'm about and what, what I do well. Um, so I think it's it's very um, switching that mentality from outbound to inbound is, is is just really powerful both for business and for personal development. Uh, and lastly, it's building portable capital because all this is under your name, not your not tied to your present employer. Uh, and I think uh, as, as someone who used to work in finance, everything is now, everything I ever did was, like, is now property of that employer. I cannot take it with me. Whereas uh, in tech, you have this unique opportunity to build uh, assets and, and, and reputation and, and whatever capital, open source capital in particular, outside of your, your main work that you can take with you wherever you go. Uh, very, very powerful. Okay, so uh, there's advanced learning and public stuff I don't have time to cover, um, but just come talk to me later. Uh, I talked a little bit about the benefits, um, and in, in particular, building track record, like um, if, if those people are, uh, if people are interested in like sort of working rem uh, remotely, as uh, asynchronously, um, building, like having an established track record, like what is the reason we interview, right? We interview to, in order to de-risk the, 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 the meeting the person that you don't, don't really know. But what is, what is better than just like looking at an established track record of someone working in public for a significant period of the time? There's nothing left to prove, right? <laughs> so, so I think that's, that's, a really, that's a really, really uh, key benefit. Uh, another story time, uh, this, one, this one's very simple. Uh, my, my first dev job, um, I you know, was uh, assigned to, to write some code in TypeScript, which I didn't really know. Um, so, then, so then I started writing a cheat sheet with like all the, all the tricks that I, that I felt like I needed to remember. And then people started contributing, uh, and it became this whole, this whole thing with like Chinese and Spanish translations and uh, other co-maintainers. And it starts to snowball because you're, you're building this like, uh, reusable resource. And what's awesome about this is it's kind of like you have open source code, but you can also open source knowledge. And every single time someone makes a PR or files an issue, um, they teach me as well as, as, as ask, ask me and build, help me build this resource together. So I've been taught by people at Uber, Airbnb, Microsoft, Atlassian. Um, it's a really, really powerful way of learning public. 
Um, okay, so uh, let's keep going. Story time number three. Okay, then this is this is the this is the story about how I develop uh, a, a, into a, a, a tweet into a talk. So um, first, I first I started out into a tweet. I was just like really kind of messing around with like with React hooks after they were released, and I was I was like, oh hey, you can sort of boil down the, the complicated concepts into twenty six lines of code. Uh, that got a lot of traction, so I built that into a uh, blog post, and then just like published it on on uh, my company blog. Um, and then I got invited to, to talk about it uh, at JSConf Asia uh, this year. So that, that, that's kind of like the progression, right, of like, um, you, you like keep working at a thing, keep pushing out stuff out in public, people notice, people work with you to develop stuff. Um, that's how you sort of, uh, you build it, build it up. You cannot get there in one standing leap on, on, on day one, right? You have to sort of build up to it. Um, so I, I highly recommend junior devs to, to do this kind of thing. Um, okay, so... Um, I also want to mention like why not learn in public. Uh, it's not for everyone, especially if you're concerned about personal safety. If you have like some stalker situation, which is real for people, uh, there's there's also a, a, a challenge of like being on the content grind or being worried about uh, uh, being branded as like spammy or like being an overnight expert. I think as long as you're authentic about where you are and you try to do your best, um, you you can stay clear of that. Uh, but it, it is not for everyone, and I don't. And there's different levels of like how much stuff you want to do in public versus uh, keep, it, keep it to yourself. Um, so that's, that's it for learning public. And then uh, the most common question, so that, that was a fairly successful sort of uh, philosophy. Um, the most common question I get is how to start. And learning gears is my answer. It really, asks, it really starts uh, to, to, to give a framework around how people learn in public. Uh, and I went and just observed everyone that, I, that I'm inspired by, and I came up with these three categories. Uh, as explorer, connector, and miner. And I'm just going to briefly introduce uh, what, what these things are. So when, when you're an explorer, your prob the problem that you're trying to solve is you don't know what you don't know. Um, and so you're just exploring. You're going a mile wide and an inch deep, right? And, uh, and mostly you're just like making notes to yourself. Um, your output is episodic with no theme to it. Um, and your commitment is low. It's just like, oh, today I feel like doing stuff. I'm just going to do that. Um, that's exploring. Connecting is a little bit more committed. Your problem is now you know things that others, other people don't and you're sharing that with other people, right? So your exhaust is starts, instead of being very self-oriented, you start uh, polishing it up a little bit to be meant for others. Uh, so your output has uh, starts to consolidate around a few pet topics and you're, you, you still don't have a grand theme, but you're, but you're exploring intersections. For example, my, my intersections with React and TypeScript. Um, and the commitment is more moderate. You're kind of putting yourself out there. It's, uh, it's, it's you know, weeks and months of, of uh, commitment for example, I commit to give a talk uh, four months out. I'm, I'm preparing to, to build that talk all the way through and deliver that talk. That's a more sort of engaged connector type commitment. Uh, and then the minor is when you've actually hit on something that's super important, that's too hard, too unknown, too important, and you're just uh, abnormally obsessed by it. Um, so your exhaust is no longer like you know, like blog posts, all this, uh, all this junk. You're actually putting out R&D and infrastructure and code and, and just like build, making things that are built to last. Um, and so the output has like one unifying theme, like you are the something person, right? Like uh, who, the points guy does points. The, the like, you know, right share guy does right share. Um, the, the commitment of this is years, on the order of years and careers, right? Like very, very high commitment. Um, so reserve this for when you, when you struck gold. So these are sort of like, I kind of compare it to like uh, bicycle gears. Um, when, you, when, you, when you found something, when you're going uphill, um, step into high gear, when you're, when you're, when you're on flat ground, you, you step into low, actually the other way around, you know what I mean. Um, so I, I also sort of crib uh, from all these other people in, in the web development industry. Um, they all have different versions of, of this philosophy. Uh, definitely go check them out, um, and I can share the, the slides later on on my Twitter. Um, so, but that's about it. Uh, these are the, the two talks. You can find out more information on, on my site, swix.io, uh, and I can take questions now. Thank you. <laughs> Um, do I just, oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, am I supposed to stand around or? No, no. So